Hello friends, welcome to Houseplant Tips and Tricks. My name is Nick and today we're going to be repotting this beautiful Monstera Deliciosa. This series is sponsored by RepotMe.com. Get all of your indoor gardening supplies delivered to your door from one place. RepotMe.com has practically anything you need for your orchids, succulents, and houseplants, including handmade potting mixes, planters, fertilizers, and much more. I have technically had this Monstera plant since 2015 or 2016. It originally started as a 10-inch pot that I purchased from a big box store. Uh, I was still learning with my plants back then, very much so, so I put it in a pretty dark corner of my home. The leaves and the stems got pretty wimpy and thin, so eventually I moved it into a bright window when I was learning <laughs> a little bit more, and it started to put off some really nice looking leaves and growth. The stems were a lot thicker, so I decided to propagate those to start a new plant, and at the same time, a plant friend of mine gave me a really large cutting of Monstera Deliciosa. So those have all worked their way into this pot here uh, since probably like 2018, 2019, I would guess. So it's this terracotta planter right here, so it's been living inside this, and we're going to go ahead and repot this inside this planter that I've been staging inside for a while now. I can hear you all right now. Yes, it's blue. I know. Uh, not the biggest fan of blue, if you're not aware, but it's a very earthy tone of blue, and I've had this planter for years. My Natal Mahogany used to live in it. I do not have Natal Mahogany anymore, so I figure this is a really perfect planter. Nothing's ever been planted directly inside it, but it has a drainage hole. Most important thing, tip number one, make sure any planter you're potting a plant in has a drainage hole 100% of the time. If it does not have a drainage hole, it is considered a cash pot or cash pot, and it is not meant to be planted inside. A layer of rocks in the bottom of your planter is not gonna help you. There is still technically no drainage and nowhere for the water to go, so always make sure 100% of the time there is a drainage hole in your planter before you pot it. Okay, good, we're through that. Uh, also, another really important tip to keep in mind when you are repotting your plants is to make sure that the soil is dry. I have a moisture meter right here. I am going to just stick inside and we will read the moisture on it. It is a two on the dry side, so it's perfectly fine to repot. If it was a little bit moist, that's totally fine. You can even just stick your finger in. You don't need a moisture meter, it's not necessary. I just like it for the convenience. If it's wet, do not repot it. If it's on the higher end of moist, do not repot it. I would try to wait until it dries out a little bit more. I understand there are rescue situations, but if you're just repotting your plant because it's time to repot it into a new planter, that's on a rescue situation. So make sure the soil's dry. That would be tip number two today. But as I just mentioned, this Monstera has been living inside its terracotta planter for roughly four years now. That's kind of a long time to be living inside the same planter. Monstera roots are very vigorous. I'm sure you can tell from just the aerial roots and the way they're swirling around and I'm constantly having to prune them before they work their way into another planter in the nearby vicinity that there is probably going to be a lot of root activity going on when we pull this out of the planter. And the longer we take, the more difficult it's going to be to take it out of the planter because those roots are going to be so set in there. So every two or three years is probably more appropriate for a large floor plant like this. Smaller plants, on the other hand, you will probably be repotting into a slightly larger planter probably every year or two when the growing season begins. Also, another hot tip is that it's best to save your repotting for the growing season. I would avoid repotting in the winter time. Of course, like I said, there's rescue missions that always need to be done to salvage a plant, but if you're just doing a normal repotting, just giving your plant a slightly larger pot to give the roots a little bit more room to grow, wait till the growing season begins. And speaking of giving your plants more room for the roots to grow, your planter that you are sizing up to should be roughly two or three inches in diameter larger if you are working with large floor plants. If you are working with smaller plants, probably keep that within the half an inch to one inch in diameter larger than the planter that it's originally living in. So this is probably about two and a half inches to three inches larger right here. So let's go ahead and get started today. I'm going to do some heavy lifting and get this down to the ground because we don't need both slash they will not both fit in our potting tray from repotme.com here. Let's get our Monstera placed in here. I'm going to be planting this up with some Monstera Imperial Soil Mix from repotme.com. All of the products that I'm using from repotme.com will be linked in the description below. If you click through those links in the description, I will get a commission. And you can use code Nick to save 10% on any potting mix from repotme.com. So don't forget to use that code if you are purchasing any potting mixes. The most difficult part about this project is probably going to be getting this plant out of the planter that it's been living in for four years because it does have such a vigorous root system. We'll see what it's looking like. I'm going to use my personal favorite tool for removing a plant from its planter, which is just a simple butter knife. You all have it at home. I would be surprised if you do not. 
but we're just gonna take our butter knife and carefully run it around the perimeter of our planter to loosen up the roots and also loosen up the soil just a little bit since this has been the same soil kind of getting caked in here for the last four years or so. And of course, being careful not to damage any roots. But Monstera deliciosa specifically does have some pretty hefty roots. If you do damage them, they will probably grow back pretty easily. I'm also kind of pushing towards the center of the plant with the butter knife to kind of loosen those roots up from the terracotta in case they are stuck. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over on its side and we'll start to kind of just dump out the soil and kind of dig down deeper until we get to a point where we can really just kind of pull this thing out of the terracotta pot. All righty. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Oh, goodness. Let me hold that up for you as close as possible. I know you're decently far away, but I don't think you need to be very close to the camera to see this. <laughs> that is a whole lot of root. Oh my gosh. So much root. I feel like this is probably more 50% root than soil at this point inside this planter or what was inside the planter. So let's just go ahead and we're going to slightly just loosen up the roots from the bottom. You don't have to go wild with it. Just let them know that they can start to explore now. I have so often when I first started getting into plants would just take my plant out of the nursery planter and just put it right in the planter and fill in soil around it, not messing with the roots at all. And then when I would go to repot the plant a year or so later, those roots haven't explored at all. They stayed inside their little root ball that they were comfortable with. So I do find it very necessary to go ahead and loosen them up a little bit, a little bit of a tease, if you will. Give it a little shake. Just to loosen it up a little bit more. And I'm just gonna dump out the contents of this repotting tray before we continue. Okay, let's start off by getting our planter in place inside our potting tray. Let's grab one of our bags of Imperial Monstera potting mix, loosen it up a little bit, and then we're gonna pour some of it into the base of our planter here, probably like half of this bag. We're gonna build a slight foundation because this pot is a little bit deeper than the one we're working with before, just a couple inches deeper. So I'm probably gonna put in about an inch and a half to two inches of soil just to make sure that we're at an adequate height. So we're not gonna increase the soil level on top at all. We're gonna keep that exactly the same. We're not gonna bury our plant whatsoever. We're just gonna add a little bit more soil on the bottom to give those roots a little bit more room to grow. So let's grab our Monstera and we'll just kind of stage it inside. We're not necessarily repotting it in yet, but I still want to get all those roots in that are just going to be kind of difficult to work with. And I think we could add like one more inch to be at the level that I'll be happy with. Some plants won't do great with a bunch of extra room on the bottom, but a Monstera Deliciosa, that should be no problem at all. The one thing I really love about repotme.com soil mixes is that they are made with coconut coir instead. Oh my God, this root is giving me so many problems. It's made with coconut coir instead of peat moss, which most of the potting mixes that you're going to come across in your local big box stores are going to be made out of. Coconut coir is much better at retaining moisture than peat moss. Peat moss either holds on to too much moisture or becomes completely hydrophobic when it dries out. Coconut coir does not behave like that. I have sincerely noted a difference between my plants growing in coconut coir than peat moss. And I'm pretty sure this has been growing in peat moss. So I'm very excited to get into a mostly coconut coir mixture. Obviously there's still gonna be the peat moss based mix that it's been growing in before, but we are going to amend that situation with a bunch of this coconut coir based soil. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start dumping the contents of this bag into the planter here, making sure I'm going all around the perimeter, filling in all the air pockets. When you're working with larger plant projects like this, always make sure you have enough soil on hand. Good thing I have another bag of Imperial Monstera potting mix today from repotme.com. So we're in good hands and this should be plenty to finish off this project. So let's go ahead and dump this in, fill it up the rest of the way. And just reiterating that we are not raising the soil level whatsoever. We are keeping it exactly the same. There might be a little bit of that coconut coir soil that's mingling on top of where the peat moss was, the peat moss base mix from before. But really we're making sure that we're not adding any more of like an eighth of an inch layer, if any, because we do not want our plant to feel like it's getting pushed underground or underwater or any of those feelings that could possibly cause it to rot. 
And another reason to make sure that you have extra soil on hand is that when you think you are done repotting, you're probably not done. So once you have all your soil filled up to the way that you like it, you're gonna go ahead and take your fingers or your whole hand in this case, because this is a pretty big planter. We're gonna take our fingers and push down around the perimeter of the planter and we're filling in any of those pockets of air that have formed while we've been just pouring our soil over the top willy nilly. I'm also a total pot spanker. You always gotta teach it who's boss somehow, but this will also <laughs> help break up those air pockets and allow the soil to fall to where it needs to be. If you don't do all of this and that, then what's likely going to happen is when you go to water your plant when you're finished repotting it, all those air pockets are going to collapse when you water it and all the soil around the perimeter pot is going to sink. So you might as well just push down and then refill it up so you can water it uniformly, then having to refill it up and water it again and then that's just, it's not really gonna cause that many problems, but it's just better to get everything done in one step for it to be more uniform, not cause any confusion in the soil with the roots and all of that. It's, it's just best to make it as simple as possible. We're living the simple life. So let's just fill in where the soil was pushed down from those air pockets when we run around the perimeter. All right, that is looking real good. So we can just go ahead and give it a couple more spanks. Just in case there are any more air pockets, get out a little bit more aggression, whatever you need to do. And some of these are starting to get a little bit longer. You can see this one right here is a little bit like, kind of not wobbly, but it's just, it's, it's, like, it's like a foot of, a foot and a half of stem at this point. So I kind of want to keep it in place. So we're going to go ahead and stake our Monstera. I have some, I think these are just like 18 inch bamboo stakes that I got from repotme.com. These will also be linked in the description below. And I'm just going to take it carefully, stick it in the soil. Keep in mind there might be some roots there that we don't want to damage. And I'm just gonna take some plant Velcro. You can get this from most plant stores. I don't think they have it on repotme.com at this moment, but we're just going to wrap the thick part of the stem around lightly. We don't want it to be too taut. It can damage the plant. If you do need to like really strangle an appendage to hold up your plant, instead of using this Velcro, use like rubber plant tie. I don't know what it's called. I don't, even, I don't know if there's a name for it. It's just like wire that's covered in like rubber. It's exactly what's used on orchids. If you've ever, ever bought an orchid that's been in flower and there's like a little stick holding it up and a little piece of like rubber tie holding it up. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Sorry, I don't know how to explain it. And you can still use the bamboo sticks, but instead of tying the main stem to the stake lightly, you can like strangle these aerial roots to the bamboo stakes and that should hold it up but that's really only if you need to just have some really aggressive holding up your plant or if you're like tying it to a trellis or something, that could work out. Once these plants get a little bit more mature, they can be monstrous, hence the name Monstera. So there are probably going to be situations down the line where you might need to kind of just mangle those aerial roots, but they will not mind. They will regrow. They take damage very well. The plant, however, the green parts of the plant are not going to handle damage as well. While they will regrow, you don't want to strangle that. You hear me? I think this is the only one I'm going to stake up at the moment. This one back here is starting to get a little bit longer, but it's, it's supporting itself pretty well. This middle one is the only one that really needs a little bit extra support. And I think you can see now that it's raised up, it looks a lot better and it makes the plant look a lot more full than it did prior. And of course I have to water this now. I'm just going to take it over to my shower. I'll probably turn on the shower head to clean off the leaves a little bit. If that's not hitting the soil directly, I'll fill up my watering can and go ahead and go over the top of this until it's fully saturated. Also kind of why it's really important to do your repotting when your plant soil is dry or on the drier side because it is very good to give your plants a really good watering, specifically your foliage plants. So usually let your succulents and cacti settle in for a couple of days after repotting, but your tropical foliage plants would love a really good watering right after they've been repotted. So make sure that soil's dry. But yeah, after I'm done watering this, this is ready to go back in its spot where it was living next to my trellis on the floor by the window, underneath the grow light, it's getting all the love that it deserves. And I'm very hopeful that now that this plant has some fresh soil and a little bit more room for its roots to grow, I'm hoping we're gonna get a lot of leaves on this plant this year. Usually my Monstera Deliciosas will put off like four leaves, maybe five leaves, a growing season. I've already got one leaf grown on two of the four plants in this pot here. So we'll see how it goes from here, but some fresh soil and a little bit extra room should hopefully encourage us to grow a little bit more.
So thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thank you again to RuPaulMe.com for sponsoring today's video. As I mentioned, I will leave all the products I use from their website linked in the description below. If you click through those links and buy anything, I will earn commission. And you can use code Nick to save 10% on any potting mix from RuPaulMe.com. Thank you once again. If you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Philly Foliage. You could subscribe to my Patreon if you want to support me monetarily. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Duh. And I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.